Hey guys, it's Brendan the Paleo Dude, and welcome back to another Jurassic World Dominion review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Capture and Crush truck. It just hit shelves here in Canada. Um, we've got them now in Walmart, and I'm pretty sure they will be appearing in Toys R Us pretty soon. Um, I have seen people online saying this is a, uh, a little bit of a too cartoony vehicle, but I think it fits well with the toy line. Um, in the past, we had stuff like the Gyrosphere Blast playset, and that vehicle had really great um, functions and features, and now this one has interchangeable um, weaponry, a capturing arm, and a missile launcher, which is really neat, and I don't mind the colors at all. I think these uh, red features are pretty cool. Um, now, this one, I'm pretty sure it does not have the engine logo on it. Um, it might have in prototype images, but we just have the the uh, logo, Jurassic Park logo. And not engine, um, what's the new company? Biosyn. Um, but I'm not sure who would own this vehicle in, in the uh, movies. Though I'm pretty sure it won't be appearing in the movies. Um, Unless it has. I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comments if uh, you've seen it in the trailers or not. Um, I was just trying to think of, like, the car scenes and stuff. But, yeah, no, it's a fun set. It comes with a dinosaur as well, which is really nice. This random raptor. Um, it may be hinting at other raptors in the, uh, in the movie. Um, I know on the official website I saw a, uh, a post on it, actually. They have these documents from the Biosyn Valley, and it says there's two Velociraptors, or maybe four, I can't remember, in there. So that's official um, marketing stuff, so I'm not sure if we'll be seeing that, or if it's canon or not, but it's pretty cool that they included this uh, new Raptor. Um, you can see on the back there, there's these chains that go over top, they interlink to hold the dinosaur down, which is pretty cool. And, uh, this missile on the top looks more like a dart of some kind. And, uh, yeah, there's lots of, uh, damage features as well. So, I'm excited to just dig right in. Let's start by freeing the raptor. So there we have it. Ooh, the arm's a little warped from being in there. Um, should be fine. I could just bend it a little bit out. Um, it's basically just a repaint of the basic blue figure. Um, so it's orange with this sort of um, purpley brown coloration to it. And this one does, in fact, come with a scan code. So we'll scan that. Uh, the truck also comes with a scan code. And I'm pretty sure there's a game you can play with it in the app um, from what I've seen. So yeah, no, Raptor's pretty cool. It's having trouble standing though. I'll prop it up with the tail. Voila. Okay, so let's get this arm freed since it's loose. Um, it's got this little peg for interchangeable function. Um, it's got multiple different levels of um, elevation, and then this is pretty loose actually. It just kind of wiggles around, which will be cool if you have a dinosaur in it and you're driving it, and the dinosaur is flopping. Um, this back part, I'm pretty sure we're just going to have to um, rip somehow. Ah, that plastic's pretty sharp. Okay, so, ooh, the rubber's, um, feels so weird, what the hell? Let's see. So, this, uh, this little dart goes in like this, and then there's a button on the top. These little handlebars for a figure to hold. It's very detailed. It's a lot of attention there to making it look good. And then, let's see how powerful it is. Oh, that's pretty decent. Um, I can tell it's lightweight, so it's got far range, but it, it doesn't hit that hard. Um, and then these are like stretchy, rubbery sort of things that you know, they bounce around and stuff. Um, so those will be cool to test out. 
Now for the vehicle, I'm pretty sure it's just these holding it in. I could be wrong. Um, there's one more over here. Okay, there has to be something. Oh no, we're gonna have to do box uh, surgery. Or not, there's a little flap here. Oh, there we go. Um, so we lift this up, and then we pull that up. Uh, okay, and now, hopefully, it will be free. Nice. Eat the box. Okay, so let's remove these thingies from the front. The windshield is, um, or the window or whatever, that is a solid black piece, so, um, no figures looking out it, unfortunately. But you can, wow, okay, you can put figures in it, though. There's a steering wheel, there's lots of leg room in there, and there's a pretty detailed, um, driver's seat with all these little dashboard features. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so they did put a lot of um, effort on into the interior, um, so figures can drive it. Uh, you just have to bust open the... Oh, it isn't solid. No way, look. Okay, so you can see through it. Nice. It's just very tinted. Um, and I like how the only way you can get the figures out is to bust them out. There's some nice dino damage features here. Um, so... Finally, we have a vehicle with dino damage. Oh, we gotta remove these. There we go. Okay, so you just hit that, and the front kind of springs off like that. So we'll try hitting it with the raptor. With the snoot of the raptor. Oh, nice! That's very fluid, it doesn't get stuck on anything. Um, and it's easy to put back on and do again. Just slide it back and push it down. And all it takes is a light little tap from anything. And it just flies off like that. Wow, that's addicting. I love that. Okay. So now that we got that feature done, there is a door feature. Or not a door. Side panel, I guess you can say. Um, so you just press that in, and then it pops off like that. This reminds me of the Destructosaurs lineup with the helicopter. It had a very similar thing where um, the dinosaurs had magnets in their heads, and when you put them against, oh, put them against these um, parts, they would fly off or fall off. This button, you have to press it all the way in for it to activate. Um, if it just goes surface level, it doesn't do the trick. Uh, okay, so that's pretty nice. And the interior of these have little scratches on them. Um, so it's definitely very detailed. Um, they didn't cheap out on anything with this. So they've got two parts of dino damage. Um, this is a slightly different color from the rest of the hall, same with the roof, um, but it's not that noticeable, which is interesting because they did have this part right here um, pretty much the same color as the rest of the vehicle, um, which is, uh, yeah. Oh, and we'll grab that scan code. I can't remember if we did that. So there you guys have it. There's the, uh, the vehicle. And on the inside, there's the little Jurassic Park logo that all of the figures have on them somewhere. There's lots of scratch marks in there. Um, you can stand human figures in there or have dinosaurs. So if you're just hauling your uh, your humans around in the back of it, they have a place to stand on these little pegs. Um, and then if you're hauling your dinosaur around, um, 
you have plenty of room for these these smaller dinosaur assortments and then for the um, chains to hold them in they just go on these side pegs right there and they have a little kind of thing that goes around them and then it holds it in so it doesn't like break out um, now, I'm pretty sure these are interchangeable, but we're going to see how easy that is. Oh wow, it is actually quite easy to remove them. Okay, that's nice. So yeah, these are interchangeable. Um, you can have Owen standing. There's this nice little, um, oh wow, what the heck? So this is rubbery actually, this, this part right here. Um, it's it's like this sticky rubber um, and I'm pretty sure it's so your figures can I guess stand on it without them flopping around wow the Mattel designers <laughs> really thought of everything um, yeah and then just have him holding that um, now for the crane oh, I think this is supposed to be on the top there like that and then they can stand on this rubbery part and hold on to the weapon like that but yeah the great area um, I don't know why it's sticky that's that's the only thing that comes to mind but they also have pegs on the top here for human figures to stand um, so they don't fall off the vehicle and the sides here you can also have them stand Wow so there's, there's lots of flexibility with where you can put your figures. And then the crane arm itself can go on the side here and you can pick up the Raptor. Um, yeah, and so if people get this set, it has basically everything you need except for the human figures. You've got the dinosaur to hit um, the parts on the vehicle. Um, you have a little tranquilizer to shoot the raptor. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and then you can pick it up with this crane arm. It's, probably, it's got a pretty good grip. Lift it up. <laughs> and then it's dangling there. So there's the, uh, there's the dangling motion. Whee! And then put it in the back. The crane has like a nice range of motion there. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm pretty sure the crane arm can also go on the side. You saw there was a, um, or maybe not. <laughs> There's like this side thing. Yeah, I don't think the crane can go there. It can just go on the top or the side. But I like the interchangeability, like how you can have the, uh, the blaster there on the side or the top. Um, this was a good touch, this extra little area to put the crane or the weapon. Um, three spots give it more possibilities, and I kind of like that. The, uh, the interchangeability and the customization of it is quite sick. If you get a second vehicle, you can have like two cranes or two of the blasters. Um, there's so much you can do. So with the vehicle, um, I'll do a future video on size, but it's like around, say, the Hammond Collection para <laughs> in, uh, in size, roughly. Which is pretty weird, because it looks big in person, it looks big from the images, but it's not actually, like, that massive of a vehicle. It's just pretty bulky. Um, we'll test out the, the figure compatibility. We'll put Owen inside of it. So, there's plenty of room for legs, I think. You just gotta kind of force him in like that. <laughs> and then, there we go. He's in. Um, I think he's having a hard time because of his little butt um, knife thing. But yeah, we'll put his gun back. However the heck he holds it. There we go. But yeah, this vehicle is a definite for collectors. Um, I know a lot of people that aren't going to pick it up, but it's fun regardless. Like, 
kids, adults, anyone, it's definitely like the perfect Jurassic vehicle uh, with so many of the action features and compatibility with the figures. Uh, Mattel has done it again with the level of quality in this piece. And just like that, it's ruined. Oh my goodness. But yeah, no. Um, definitely one of my favorite vehicles in the new lineup. Um, the legacy vehicles are nice, but I'm always a sucker for anything with an action feature. And whenever they can incorporate a vehicle like this into the toy line, it always ties the whole like Jurassic World together. Um, where'd the weapon go? There it is. And this one was actually $50 Canadian, which is quite crazy. Um, but with everything that you get um, on the vehicle, it's definitely worth it, in my opinion. Um, there's so much you can do with it, so it's fun. Perfect toy for kids um, and collectors as well. And loving the uh, compatibility with figures and whatnot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll definitely be comparing it to other vehicles in the near future, and I'll probably be using it a lot in um, photography and films, more so in like toy films. It's not really that photogenic with the, uh, the red parts and everything, but I'll see what I can do. So um, without, I guess that's the end of the video. If you've stayed for this long and aren't subscribed, I highly recommend doing it um, and leaving a like, I'd appreciate that. And I'll see you all in the next video then. Bye-bye.